it, it was almost sad for me here a second ago because I don't know how much you guys think about this, but my mask had the perfect fit. I almost hated to pull it off. I, I don't think I'm going to re-get that seal just the way it was. Hey, uh, glad we're all here tonight together. Uh, if you're new with us, welcome. I'm Pastor Kevin. Uh, we have a life center out there. There's a little something that we can hand you as a guest if you're here for the first time, second time, 43rd time, whatever. Um, if you're uh, going to be watching us tomorrow online, uh, welcome to you as well. Uh, let's pray real quick. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be together as believers. Uh, God, we just want to place this night in your hands and ask, Father God, that you would speak through the worship, that you would speak through the message, God, uh, that you would just, uh, uh, even if you need to, God, skip all that stuff and just speak right to our heart, Holy Spirit. We invite you in tonight to make a difference, God, in our lives, in the lives of the, uh, the people we come in contact with and love, Father God, uh, in the lives of the people that we have a hard time with. Uh, and, and I just pray, Father, that we just represent you and we show love all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, Pastor Brad's going to bring us a word about prayer, uh, and he's a professional prayer, so we should listen to him. Uh, that's going to happen in a little bit, and right now we're going to go back to worship, so praise the Lord.
throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring In every season from where I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, and all over my life. come, the fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength and you always will be. And I see the evidence of your goodness all over my
again. Why should I fear all the evidence is here? God, if you're for us, who could be against us? angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he rescues them oh thank you thank you Lord from the ashes your love has brought us out of the darkness and into the light lifting our sorrows and bearing our burdens healing our hearts and to our God we lift up song to a God we lift up one voice singing alleluia to a God we lift up one voice to a God we lift up one song to a God we lift up one voice singing alleluia singing alleluia
singing hallelujah. Make his praise. Sing it out. Make his praise and glory. For his name. For his name. Put the name of Jesus on your lips right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, sing out to him. Sing out to Jesus. Give him all your worry, all your doubt, all your fear. Sickness and disease. Everything going on right now, the backdrop of the world, give it all. Lay it at his feet right now. In Jesus' name, lay it all at his feet. All at the foot of the cross. Jesus paid for everything. He bore your sicknesses and your diseases, and by his wounds you are completely healed. He has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. 
give thanks and praise to your Redeemer right now. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name. Thank you. The victorious one, Jesus Christ, victorious one. We bless your name. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord, that we didn't just sing songs, that we were just in your presence, God. It was more than singing songs to a, to a, a room, Lord. We, we filled this place with our praise, with our worship. We met with our creator, with our savior. You invited us into relationship, Father God, and we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We can't praise you and worship you enough, Lord. Would you just press into our hearts your goodness, Lord? your desire, Father, to be in relationship with each one of us, God. Help us to love you back the way you love us. During worship, um, church, um, God put, a, put something on my heart, uh, a group to pray for right now. There's so much, don't you know, that we could be praying for right now. Um, and in the midst of all of this, um, confrontation and confusion and, and uh and just, the, uh, there's a mess. There's a lot of mess going on right now. Uh, the people that God just called me to, to invite us all to pray together for tonight were people of faith, Christian people, who, because of all things that feel, appear to be crumbling around them, have their faith crumbling too. So I just want us to join together right now and pray for believers right now who, who see a, a world that's full of confusion and chaos and somehow that's impacting their faith, which is not full of confusion and chaos. We serve a God who is the same today, forever, and always. So let's just lift that, uh, let's lift those folks up, because I know there's people struggling. Maybe you're one of them. If that's you, let somebody know right now, and we'll just place some hands on you, and we'll play an, pray an extra prayer. Father God, uh, I just want to lift up your people to you, God, your sheep, those who follow you, God, right now. In, the, in a world, Lord, where a lot of things don't make sense, it doesn't matter, and I hate to even say this, what side we're on. Something doesn't make sense for all of us, God. We're, we're living in a time of chaos and confusion. Uh, a lot of people with angry uh, reactions to the world, Father God, and, and we're, we're, some of us are allowing that to come into our faith and our relationship with you, God. And I pray, God, that, that right now, this world needs strong believers. This world needs strong people of faith. This world needs strong Christians to show the way. So, Father God, if we're walking wounded right now, if we're allowing the world to seep into our bones and, and to seep into our spirit, Father God, and, and we're starting to doubt and wonder and, uh, and feel lost, Father God, help us to be found by you. Tonight, I just want to lift up everyone in this building, God, and everyone we know and love and pray for, and even those we don't. Father God, you're a big God who has big plans for everyone. God, meet us right where we're at. Meet us in that spot of confusion and be the calm voice. Right now, I pray, God, we don't have to wait. We don't have to pray this for 20 straight days. Right now, God, bring your peace. Holy Spirit, bring your peace to those who are struggling. I pray, Father, that you're raising up a bunch of people right now who are ready to withstand this and to lead the way, God, and to shine a light. All the things that we're called to do in every season, Father God, they're just harder to do sometimes. So, Lord Jesus, I just ask that you would fill us all with your love, with your spirit. Make us strong tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, grab a seat. Um, there is an offering box in the, back. in the back. We also have the online options and mail-in options that I'm sure you probably know about. 
Uh, so feel free to give your tithes and offerings that way. And Pastor Brad is coming up. All right, amen. Thank you, worship team. Hello. I just want to say good morning. That just stuck in my head for the last 10 years, so get used to it. Welcome. Glad you made it to church today, tonight. For those of you watching online, thank you for continuing to tune in. We hope we get to see you soon. Uh, before we get into the word today, we have some family business to take care of. So we are going to handle that right about now. So we got some stuff here. So we, uh, men's ministry has a tradition here at Abundant Life, and given the outcome of, given the uh, year Seahawks had, uh, we find that fantasy football can actually be more fun than real football sometimes. <laughs> and so we play fantasy football, it's for fun, there's no money involved, it's okay. Uh, I think we had like 24 teams this year, and we are after the, the prize possession, this is called the Joe and uh, this is, uh, this is our, our second year. Joe Nelson, uh, in memory of Joe Nelson, a dear friend who uh, was the biggest fantasy football geek of them all. And um, I haven't seen the spreadsheets quite like his, but uh, there are some that rose above this year to win in each of their leagues. And so we're going to present them with their trophies. The first one we will give to the uh, defending champion of his league last year, Isaiah Bodain. Come on up. Yeah, buddy. All right. And then we have, there you go, sir, Mr. Mike Milo. Come on, buddy. There you go, sir. And finally, I'm waiting to save this for last because I'm a little sore about it, Mr. Don Reed. dominating the league I was in. Congratulations, sir. Well deserved. There you go. <laughs> oh. So guys, if you want to join in on the fun, you can do that sometime in uh, August. I think we, we sign up and it's just for fun. So congratulations to you guys. You can bring those to the next draft to show them off and we'll, uh, we'll keep on going. So, hey, we are in 2021. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want us to forget, though, that there was a lot of good things that happened in 2020. You just got to think hard, and you will find them. But there are also things that we want to kind of start over, do over, and I believe that 2021 for our church and for God's church is a year where there's a bunch of things that need to get reset and restarted. You ever call tech support, the first thing they tell you? Reset it, right? Things get bogged down. Things get messy. Things spiral out of control, and I believe that this year God has a reset for his church where there is a fresh slate, there is a new thing that God wants to do. Lamentations chapter 3 says this in verse 22, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, the Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. And sometimes in life you just need a fresh start. You, you, we try to improve on things, we try to get better on things, but sometimes you just need a fresh start. You've just got to wipe the slate clean, and aren't you glad that the mercies of the Lord are new every morning? Aren't you glad that He is the God of new beginnings? He is the God of fresh starts, and so as we, we walk into this year and, and, and believe that God is going to reset some things, He's going to put some things, the foundations back how they need to be, He's going to reestablish some things in our faith and in our hearts, it doesn't start in any better place than in prayer. And, and we've, been, we've been talking about prayer a little bit because as a church, we've been going through 21 days of prayer and fasting. I feel like I hear something. All right. Anyway, I hear noise. Somebody's musical instrument. Thank you, sir. You're the best. All right. It was great, but I, I will just, I'm going to be humming and stuff, and it's just going to mess me. Thank you. Don't you love our worship team? Aren't they awesome? Man. <laughs> there you go. So we're going to start with prayer. So uh, we are day nine and 21 days of prayer and fasting. Next week, I'm going to 
going to talk about fasting a little bit. Don't avoid the service just because it's about fasting. I want you to hear what the Lord's heart is for fasting. So uh, I have never, and I, I, I guess you can never say never, but I have not up to this point, nor do I intend to do one of those things where we say, everybody in the church, you need to fast. I believe that God is, that there's a personal conviction that God gives us, and there's times where we come to the Lord and we fast, and it's a, it's a personal decision. And so I want to talk to you about what it is so that if you choose to, to fast over these 21 days, then you can have a deeper understanding of the, the power of it and what God's doing. But we'll start with prayer today. We'll start with prayer. Corey Ten Boom wrote, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? There's the question. Is it your steering wheel or your spare tire? In other words, does it guide your life or is it used in case of emergency? What is prayer to us? What does prayer look like? In our lives. You see, to Jesus, prayer was his guide. And throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus over and over setting time aside in his life to pray. Prayer is more than an event, it is a lifestyle, it is something that we do to connect with God. And we see Jesus praying often. And often his prayers would get interrupted. He would go to get alone to pray, and people needed him. Have you ever tried to get alone in your house and someone needed you? And you just wanted your time. This happened to Jesus a lot, but he kept fighting for that time to go and spend time with the Father. We see a priority in the life of Jesus. Prayer, a priority in his life. And I think if something is a priority in the life of Jesus, then we should evaluate it. If something's a priority in his life, then we should take a look at it. Because maybe it needs to be a priority in our life as well. And we see something in the life of Jesus in Matthew 21 that's kind of rare. And that's angry Jesus. We see Jesus getting upset. Now we see Jesus is so often is just this great teacher and he's meek and he's mild, but we see a rare thing. We see Jesus showing up at a temple and a bunch of thieves and robbers are setting up shop, a marketplace in the house of God, and Jesus isn't happy about it. And Jesus comes in and we know as he turns over the tables and he cleans house and he says something really interesting in the temple. He doesn't say, hey, what are you guys doing? This is where we worship God. He doesn't say, this is where I teach. He says, this is where we pray. And he says in Matthew 21, 13, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer. A house of prayer. That is what God has called us to. And he specifically spoke out prayer because I believe prayer mattered deeply to Jesus. He knew that something divine happens when we pray. And so he sat down with his disciples on I believe many occasions, it's recorded in the Gospels different ways, and we're going to look at Matthew chapter 6 today, so if you could turn to Matthew chapter 6, if you want to take notes, awesome, if you want to take them in the church app, they are there as well, Matthew chapter 6, and we will go to verse 5, here we go, almost there, okay, it says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So Jesus is giving a clinic on prayer. A demonstration of how we approach the throne of God, how we approach prayer. And the first thing he gives us, and before he gets into what we would refer to as the Lord's Prayer, which is really an example of prayer that he gives us, Jesus gives us some guidelines, some styles of prayer. Have you noticed there's lots of different styles of prayer? And did you know that sometimes we hear styles of prayer and we think, 
that one style is better than the other or that my style of prayer isn't as good as their style of prayer? Well, Jesus addresses different styles of prayer, and I want to look at them real quickly, and then we're going to get into the main, the main thing. The first style of prayer I'm going to call accolade prayer. Now, accolade would be, well, a trophy. Right, we just did accolades. They want, we had some, some guys win some fantasy football, and they got some accolades. And when it comes to prayer, however, Jesus said this is what the hypocrites do, is they pray in this way. They're motivated by how they look and how they sound to others. So they're out praying, out on the street corners, just declaring the goodness of God and praying to God. And people walking by would say, wow, that is such a faithful man. Look at him pray. He really knows how to pray. And just, it just feels good when someone tells you you're good at something. And so I just pray even more. And, and you get around people, and they seem to know how to pray. And so all of a sudden, your words get a little fancier and a little better. And you just speak it out. And Jesus says, here's the problem with this kind of prayer. Praying for praise is that the reward is not connecting with the heart of God like it should be. The reward of accolade prayer is really compliments from men, from people. He says, if you pray in a way, if your point of prayer is so that people will hear how eloquently you pray, you've already got everything you need to out of prayer, a compliment. And that's the end of it. Now, I don't know about you, but when I pray to God, I would appre- I, I'm, I'm hoping for more than a compliment. I'm hoping to communicate with God. But he says, if, if you're looking for praise, then you'll get praise, and that's what it is. That's all you get. You see, the goal of prayer is to connect with God. Jesus emphasizes this when he says, our Father in heaven. He emphasizes this word Father, that prayer is really a connection. It's a relationship with our God. But if you do it for show, the only thing you get in return is a compliment. And then he, he talks about the next kind of prayer, which I'll call formula prayer, in which you come up with a formula on the right way to pray. Jesus says here, he calls them empty phrases. I don't know if you've, if you've ever prayed in public, and maybe some people have a, a fear of speaking in public. Uh, some people have a fear of praying in public. Some people have a fear of singing in public, whatever that happens to be. And, and the reason that we have these types of fears is because there's something in us that tells us we're just not that good at it. We don't really have, we, we, I, I don't know what to say, I don't know how to do it, I, I don't sound like I don't have my words put together. And it seems sometimes, like in prayer, it's like those who have the most words win, like it's some type of a contest. Like we go into prayer and we hear people praying and they've got all these words and they're speaking and they're saying it a certain way and you, you sit there thinking, man... I don't know if I can pray like that. I better just be quiet and listen. But Jesus says that's not what prayer is about. He says that's not true at all. In fact, he says, quit carrying on and on and on when you pray. Quit carrying on and on and on. Quit making it seem like you have to say all these things. And maybe that's kept you from praying. I want to encourage you. If you it's kept you from praying where you feel like, I don't know all the right words to pray. If you're in a place where you're saying, you know, I, I haven't, I, I would come to pray. I don't know if you know this, but we pray every Saturday night at 530, and everybody is welcome to pray. And if everybody shows up, we'll find a bigger room, because I think prayer is so important. And you can come and pray at 530, and if you just show up and ask someone, where's everybody praying at, and we'll tell you. Come and pray, but you get into the prayer room, and you think, okay, I'm listening here. I got to polish up on my Christianese first. You know, so I'm going to get ready for prayer. I'm going to get out my King James, and I'm going to get all of these and the thou so I can get ready to go to that prayer room. And we think these things through. We think, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's, maybe, I haven't, I got to get into my, I got to memorize some scripture first. Because when I get in there and I, I'm praying, I mean, I want to be, be break out with like a psalm, by like memory. Because, I mean, that's got to, I look spiritual if I'm praying and I can also quote scripture at the same time. And I don't know, maybe I, I shouldn't pray because I don't know how to order it. Is, it. is it dear father? Do I do the, is the Jesus name at the, before the amen or is that how I start? Like, what's the formula? And Jesus says, stop. Stop going on and on as if 
putting your words together in the right order or your quantity of words is important. How you say it. But I don't know how to pray. So I don't know what to say to God. I, I get in a room with people and I pray and, and I, I don't even know how to pray when I'm by myself. What do I say to God? Well, here's the thing. I want to set you at ease. God is capable of interpreting your words and your prayers. You can say the dumbest things to God. And he'll still get it. He'll still understand it. I have prayed the most ridiculous things to God that, to, that are like, I can't believe I just said that. You know? You just, like, oh God, you are like a shoe to me. You know? Like, well, that sounded dumb. You know? And you carry me on. Like, what was I thinking? And God understands the heart. Like, we, we think, I don't know, I'll look silly, I'll sound silly. Here's the thing. If you are praying to God and you are praying with people and the biggest concern is that I will be judged because of my prayers, well then, well, if you are judged because of your prayers, we got some stuff we got to deal with here at the church, right? <laughs> because we are just trying to connect with God. And you can, you can pray. There's not a formula. There's not a right quantity of words. You can come before the Lord. You can come to prayer with us at 530 and your prayer could be, God, you rock. Like, that's three words. That's all you could come up with. And you know what? God knows what your heart was desiring to speak out to him. And that's enough. And that's enough. He says, don't just carry on and on and on. It's not a contest of words. Jesus doesn't need your words. He wants your heart. And so that brings us to the third kind of prayer that Jesus talks about, which is what I will call genuine prayer. Genuine prayer, not a, not a prayer where I'm hoping everybody listens to how well I pray, not a prayer in which I now have all the words and I've come up with them all and I've said lots of things and I sound important, but genuine prayer, where those who are praying with the right intentions, they don't care if anyone besides God is listening. They don't worry about all the right words. In fact, Jesus says, go to the secret place and pray. The secret place, in other words, go Start in prayer alone. You see, I believe that if prayer is going to erupt in public in the church of Jesus, then it's got to begin somewhere in private. If, if praise and worship is going to erupt in the church of God, it's got to begin somewhere in private. If understanding of the word of God is going to happen in church, it's got to begin somewhere in private. Or in our lives, we own our walk with God. In our lives, we pray. In our lives, we say, God, I need prayer to be my steering wheel. I need it to be my guide that I pray. I pray over mundane things. I pray over huge things and everything in between. And we can get stuck in these patterns of prayer. These patterns of prayer where we have certain prayer points throughout the day. There's the wake up morning prayer, and then there's the God bless this food prayer, and then there is give us a good night's sleep prayer, and it's the same prayer. And if that's where you're at, don't stop that. Just keep praying. But I want to encourage you to move to a place in which prayer becomes a part of your life in private, where you pray to the Lord. I love praying while I drive with my eyes open. Just I want to give that disclaimer. And it's, I mean, fortunately for me, I drive 162 a lot, so there's, there's no one that I look over at, you know, while my mouth's just moving and there's no music playing and it looks weird and it looks like I'm talking to myself. I don't care. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's, it's a secret place for me. It's a, a lone space. It's, it's time for me to just go and be with God. Jesus says, go to the secret place and pray. Get alone and pray. The, the Greek word for this word place or room, it speaks to a storeroom where treasures are kept. So when Jesus says, go to the secret place to pray, what he's really saying is, go to the treasure room and seek me. Because there are treasures that God has waiting for you in prayer. There are treasures that will only be revealed when you go and pray and seek the heart of God. There are 
times when, when you, you're looking in the word and it's not making sense, but there are treasures when you begin to pray and say, God, would you speak to me through your word? God, would you show me what you have for me? But it's going to require prioritizing prayer. You see, Jesus regularly received vision and direction and clarity and wisdom and insight from the Father in his life. And I hope that in my life, that it can be said of me that it is the place of prayer in my life that I receive vision and direction and clarity and wisdom and insight from God. That is the place where we receive insight from God. And if you, if you go to a place of prayer and you're saying, you know, I, I just, I, I pray to God, I don't hear anything back, I would just say, don't give up, just keep going. Keep talking to God. Because prayer should be aligning our hearts and our minds with the kingdom of God. That is the ultimate goal of prayer. How many of you know that the kingdom of this world, well, it's shattering and shattered and shatters all the time? But see, prayer aligns us with a different kingdom. See, the Bible says that our citizenship is to be in heaven. And so if we are citizens of heaven, then we should be about the kingdom of heaven. And prayer brings us to a place. Do you ever need an escape? Do you ever look around this world and just say, I need an escape? I need an escape. I was on social media earlier today, and I saw a lot of people saying, I'm out of here. You need an escape. Well, the best escape is to go and pursue the, a different kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And prayer brings us to a place in which we pursue the kingdom of God. It's in prayer that the kingdom of God is revealed. This is the kind of prayer that God desires. I want to suggest to you today that kingdom prayer is the kind of prayer that we need right now in our world. There are, there are probably thousands of solutions and simultaneously zero solutions to the happenings of our world in a practical way. But the kingdom of God, kingdom prayer, will take it to a different place in your life that we can rise above, that the church, I believe that in this season, this is not a time, and I, I've heard fear over this, this is not the time where the church will be crushed, but the church will rise. And it will require that we align our eyes, our hearts, our minds with a different kingdom. A different kingdom, a different reign, and a different rule. And the way we do that is we go and we pray. And we seek the kingdom of God. And we allow the kingdom of God to hit our hearts. We allow the kingdom of God to be revealed to us. This is kingdom prayer. This message is titled simply, Kingdom Come. Because I believe that this is the ultimate goal that Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. Let the kingdom of God come. Let it come to my world. Let it come to my life. Let it come to me. And Jesus begins to teach about the kingdom of God here in Matthew chapter 6. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Notice when Jesus is teaching them to pray, this is the first thing he asks for. He starts by just connecting and praising the Father. The first thing he asks for in prayer is your kingdom come. That's his request. What is God's kingdom then? What is the kingdom of God? It's not, an, it's not to be confused with an actual kingdom. See, the Jews got confused. They were like, Jesus, when are you going to come and wipe out all these Romans and all the rule? When are you going to do that? Well, Jesus will return and there will be a day where it will be wiped out and he will reign both in heaven and on earth and it will be amazing. And we are to look forward to that day. But see, we can't confuse right now the kingdom of God with a power, an authority figure, a structure on earth. It is not a government system. It is not a powerful country. No, the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17 says, is not a matter of eating and drinking. In other words, it's not a physical thing that you eat or drink, but it's of 
righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's not physical things, it's spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. In other words, this isn't things that you just talk about, you say, you, you discuss, you debate, you disagree on, you be divided about. It's about the power of God present in your life. The best mention of God's kingdom, I believe, is though in Luke 17, 21, where Jesus says, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. What would Jesus mean by that, that the kingdom of God is in the midst of you? Here's what I believe that means, is that where the king is, there's where the kingdom is. And so Jesus is standing in the midst of them and saying, I'm here, therefore my kingdom is here. And when Jesus is brought into a situation, when he is brought into our midst, we are asking him to establish his kingdom. And what we need right now in our world is God's people to say, King Jesus, come be in our midst and bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven here on earth as it is in heaven. That where the king is, there's where his kingdom is. And so we pray, let your kingdom come. Would you just declare those words out? Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. I want, I, I want to challenge us to pray this prayer. This prayer over and over every day this week. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. This word come, the Greek word, it means to arrive, to establish, to become known to influence. So we're asking for the influence of God. Do you believe that your country needs God's influence? Do you believe that your children need God's influence? Do you believe that your world needs God's influence? So we say, let it come. Let it be established. Let it be here. This is what we're asking when we say your kingdom come. Let there be the influence of God. Let your ways be known. The earth's kingdoms are broken. And if we didn't know that before now, we surely know it now. We are a broken kingdom. We are a broken people. I don't think that's a new problem. But it's become a more obvious problem. And so we are a broken kingdom. And so what we need is the rule and reign of Jesus on this earth. We need the rule and reign of Jesus in our homes. You see, we can look around and we can point all the fingers we want and that person didn't come through and that person didn't come through and that person messed it up and that authority figure made a mistake and this authority figure I don't like and this authority figure, whatever it is, this government system doesn't work. But the reality is, is that we must start with ourselves. Let the rule and reign of Jesus be in our home. That we say Jesus will reign in this place. And when we say Jesus, you come reign in this heart, in this, in this home, in this place. I recognize that you're in charge. I recognize that you're in charge. You come rule and reign in me. And then we move on. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would rule and reign in our schools. Because we have a generation that is coming up. That is being taught. A different view of the world than the Bible view of the world. We have a generation who is coming up that the things of, of wickedness are being crammed down their throats and being told they are the things of love and things that are normal. And yet we must pray. If you are, we have people in here, 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, all the way up to you graduated a couple years ago. Maybe more than a couple years ago. And every person in every age group should be praying, God, let your kingdom come in the school. Let it come in our schools. Let it come in our, in our private schools and our public schools. But we need the kingdom of God. We need the rule and reign of Jesus in this place. And did you know that in our public schools that God has placed a calling on the lives of so many people who are Christians who are showing up to work every day and praying, let your kingdom come and your will be done today in my classroom, today in my school. Now, they're not there to preach. They're not supposed to be doing that. That's one of the rules. 
No one says you can't pray. No one says you can't go to your God. No one says that when that student comes up to you and their life is falling apart and they walk out of that door they, and the door shuts and the students have left, you go before the Lord and say, Lord God, she needs your rule and reign. She needs the kingdom to come in her life. And you begin to intercede on behalf of your friend, of your student, of your teacher. Your teachers need the kingdom of heaven in their lives. Your teachers need the rule and reign of Jesus in their lives. What about our businesses? What about our businesses? What if the rule and reign of Jesus? What if we prayed this over our businesses? We have business owners that are here in this room. We have leaders of businesses. What would happen if we went beyond a place of managing our businesses and started inviting the kingdom of God into them? What would happen? What influence could there be in which the rule and reign of Jesus would be established in our government buildings goes without saying there's a better kingdom what about in the public square Jesus let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven it begins though when we invite his rule and reign in our hearts and if you haven't done that or maybe you've done that. Yeah, I believe in Jesus and I have faith in him. Try it. <laughs> it's a dangerous prayer. <laughs> because there's consequences for it. See, when you say, Jesus, rule and reign in my heart. When you begin to say, Jesus, you have your way in my life and in my heart. Then what happens is maybe preferences that yeah, we know those were poor choices, but they're still kind of fun. The Lord begins to speak to you in those moments when you're about to choose those things, and he says, who do you want to rule and reign? Remind me. Oh, yes, your kingdom come. Your will be done in my life. And we ask him to come and to lead us and to guide us. Your kingdom come. What we need is the kingdom of God. And beyond the kingdom of God, we need his will to be done. We say, Lord, your will. I mean, don't you like to go to God and just say, God, this is what I need you to do. God, could you do me a favor? I got some things that I need to talk to you about. And uh, I, made a, I made a wish list for Santa. He only got to two out of the 18. So I'm going to present the other 16 to you, Lord. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> No, prayer, Jesus says, is when you go to the Father and you say, okay, your will be done. Your will be done. Your purpose, your choice. Let everything that you want to accomplish, let your desires, let your plans, what you have determined need to be done. The way you have designed things to be, let it be done. Let me just give you an example. I'm just going to keep using this example because it's happening right now in this world. And everybody wants to talk about our government and what's happening and the mess in our country. And here's a prayer for you to pray over our country. Lord, God, let your will be done, your purpose, your choice. God, let everything you want to accomplish be accomplished here. Lord, let your desires happen here. Let your plans be what are walked out. Lord, what you determine needs to be done, let it be done the way that you have designed things to be. Lord, let it be done. You see, when we pray the will of God into our land, that's when things begin to change. And so we say, God, your will. Look, we've all got preferences. We've got preferences. We've got differences. But we need the will of the Lord to come and to rule and reign. This word, let it be done, is the Greek word genomy. And this word signifies a change of condition. It's a state or place. It, it means to come into existence, to come into being, to be done. When something comes into existence, where something can come into existence out of nothing. Do you ever look at the situations in your life, and it's even hard to pray because there's not even any substance that God could make anything happen with. Sometimes we can pray and say, God, here's a bunch of the broken pieces. I believe you can put it together. But what do you do when there's not even any starting point for God? See, that's this word done. 
I can pray that something that is not even in existence can come into existence when I'm asking the will of the Father to be done. You see, the same word, this same word is translated as the word made in John 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 3. And it says this about Jesus. It says, through him, all things were made. All things were done. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. It's the same word. So, Lord, let your will, let it come into existence. Let something come from what seems like nothing. Let, Lord, I, all, the, all the options have been exhausted and there's no more good ones left. Let your will come into existence, Lord. Let the things that none of us have thought about begin to come into place. Let your will be done. It's the same power. Listen, the same power that was called upon to speak creation into being is what Jesus says to call upon when we pray. That's a big power. I'm going to say that again because I think that's important. The same power that brought creation into being is the same power that Jesus says call upon that power when you pray. Pray with that kind of authority. Pray that it will be done. This is the authority of the believer. To call upon the power of God to shift the kingdoms of this world and to call down the kingdom of heaven to earth. Let it be done. Let it be done, Lord. And finally, we're not going to go through the entire Lord's Prayer. I know you're thinking like, wow, this sermon's just starting. We're just talking about the kingdom. Because I think this is a pivotal piece that Jesus is teaching here. Finally, he says, on earth as in heaven. That when we pray, it's not about us giving God all those ideas. But it's let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Not the best way I see fit. We're not asking God for an improvement. We're asking how it is in heaven. That's what we want to see here on earth. Because there's going to be a day where we're going to see it in heaven, and it will be a glorious day. But we're saying, he says, he says, as he's teaching, he says, you can ask for heaven on earth. You can ask to taste heaven on earth. Let it happen here, Lord, just like it does in heaven. Do you realize that his will, his kingdom, his desires, his plans without resistance are being done in heaven constantly? Imagine that. Imagine that. In heaven, it's all the will of the Father. Always. It is always happening. It's always his will. It's always his plans. It's always being walked out. There's, we live in a world that is evil and it is, that is fallen, and we know that God has for a time given what is called the prince of this world or Satan the ability to roam this earth and to mess things up. I know you probably would have done it different. It's all good. You, know, you can talk to God about that. But that's where we're at. But in heaven, I mean, it's, it's just... It's just free. It's perfection. It's whatever is God's best always happens in heaven, without doubt. Whatever is best, whatever is on God's heart, it's always without doubt. His rule and reign, they're not questioned ever. Oh, can you imagine that? His authority, never questioned. His ways, never questioned. In heaven. He never compromises. He's never doubted. His angels are like, I don't know, God, really? I don't think that's the best idea. He's not doubted. He's not compromised. It's always God's will without resistance is being done. And so we go to the Lord in heaven and we say, Lord, that's what I want to see here on earth. Let the ways of heaven invade earth. Lord, let my world around me, Lord, I, I want to see you moving. I want to see you move in power in my world. I want to see, see a world that, that doesn't doubt or doesn't question God, but that believes in you. And I promise you that's going to take a lot of work. That's going to take a lot of work. But he called us to the ends of the earth. He called us to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. And so it begins in prayer. God, show me how to bring 
the kingdom of heaven to earth. Your kingdom. Let it rule and reign here, Lord God. Lord, move the hearts of creation to worship you. Sometimes you just got to go out into the forest and worship with the trees and the rocks because they don't argue. I've done it. It's kind of fun, actually. They don't sing very loud. Not that I could hear. But, but the Bible says they do. But just to go out with creation, God, let creation worship you. Jesus, we need your kingdom and your will to be done. Here's what I want us to really to understand. Then we're going to take a few minutes to pray today. Kingdom prayer. Kingdom prayer. I, I, I think it's time we shift our focus a bit. What would happen if we begin to commit to kingdom prayer? That when we come to the Lord, God, I've got this really hard decision to make. I'm not sure what to do. But God, before I even start asking you about it, I'm going to just say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let your kingdom and let your will as on, on earth as it is in heaven, let that guide my decision. Let that be what guides this place. Let me, I'm trying to figure this out, Lord, but let your kingdom come and your will be done. You see, prayer is not meant to inform God of our needs or influence him. It's meant to influence us and influence our world. And when you go to the place of prayer and you approach God with kingdom prayer, you will be influenced and your world will be influenced. And we establish the reign of Jesus. No one else is going to do it, church. No one else is going to establish the reign of Jesus. No one else is going to pray the kingdom of God. But God's people. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with presenting your request to God. We're instructed in Scripture to do it. So, so I just want to make that clear. Scripture tells us to present your request to God. That's okay. What I'm talking about is the starting point in prayer. The starting point where we pray with a different mindset. We pray with a different way. Have you ever tried to bless your enemy in prayer? <laughs> Try it sometime, I dare you. It's hard. <laughs> really hard. But you know what makes it a little easier? Is when you set them in, the, in your mind and you, you have this person and maybe they're, whatever reason, they're your enemy or they don't like you or you don't like them or you're having struggles or whatever it happens to be. I can tell you that God's word, it says to bless your enemy, and it's really hard to come up with the right words to use to bless your enemy. Is this just me? Has anyone else found this? Like, uh, coming up with the right words? Here's some words to start with. Lord, in his life, I pray that your kingdom would come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I pray that you would help me to see him the way that heaven sees him. I pray your kingdom come and radically change his life. And would you change mine while you're at it? Because I need your kingdom to come in me. Jesus said in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. All these other things will be added to you, but seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God. It is time, it is in this hour, it is in this season, I believe, the church needs to seek first the kingdom of God. And there will be a hope, there will be a vision, there will be a joy in God's people that the world is going to almost be confused about and want to know. I need that. And what they need is they need the kingdom of God. What they need is the rule and reign of Jesus in their lives. Because as you've experienced, it changes everything. And if you haven't experienced that, I encourage you today as we pray to make that decision because it will change everything. Mike, Donna, could you join me up here? Would you stand with me as we pray? In your sermon notes, if you're using the church app, there are some application things to work through. I encourage you to work through those, to apply the word in your life. But can we just take a few moments? And I, I want, um, if you could just close your eyes where you're at, and if you just set your target on something in your life that is 
bothering you or is um, weighing heavy on you, something that's frustrating you, maybe something that you are mourning over. You just find something to just set your sights on. It's like you just kind of have it holding it in your hand. And would you just take a moment, and I want to challenge you to pray out loud here, as together, all together. It's, it'll be chaos, and you won't be able to hear anyone else. But can we just pray on that thing? If, if you can't think of anything, just pray for your mom, because mom's a rock. Would you just pray your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Would you just begin to pray the kingdom of God into that situation? Let's just begin to pray right now out loud as a church. Lord, we come before you, Lord God, and we pray. We pray, Lord God, the kingdom of God is here in this place, Lord God. This put in my place of frustration, Lord, in my place of impatience, Lord God, and confusion and not understanding, Lord, let your kingdom come, Lord God. Give me kingdom vision into this, Lord. Give me kingdom eyes to see, Lord God, what's really going on, Lord God. Oh God, let your will be done. Let your will be done, not my ideas, your will, God. Let it be done, Lord. Let it be done, Jesus. Let it be done. Oh, let heaven invade earth, Lord God. Let heaven invade the situation. Let heaven invade the atmosphere. Let heaven invade the building, Lord. Let heaven invade the home. Would you just continue to pray? Would you just shift the focus now back to your own heart? And let's pray over ourselves that same thing. Let your kingdom come, God. Let your kingdom come. In. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, Lord God. God, I invite your rule and reign. I invite your rule. I invite your authority. I invite, Lord God, your ways, your presence. I invite your joy and your peace, Lord God. I invite your solutions. Rule and reign, God. We're gonna just we're gonna sing this chorus together, and if you would like prayer, come forward, and someone will pray with you if you desire to be prayed for, or if you'd like to come forward and just be with the Lord and and spend some continued time in prayer. This is a place where you are free to do so. And so as we sing this. I would just invite you, if you've got some things that are weighing on you that you just need to take before the Lord, just come forward and begin to seek Him. Begin to seek Him. And if some of our uh, pastors and leaders could kind of just wander around the front, if you want prayer, I'm going to ask you, go find one of them and say, hey, I need you to pray for me, all right? So let's sing this together. You guys ready? To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice, we sing it hallelujah. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice, sing it hallelujah. Again. To a God we lift up one voice, to a God we lift up one song, to a God we lift up one voice, singing hallelujah. To a God we lift up one voice, to a God we lift up one song, to a God we lift up one voice, singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, sing it hallelujah, hallelujah, sing it hallelujah, hallelujah, sing it hallelujah, hallelujah, make his prayer.
To a God we lift up one voice. To a God we lift up one song. To a God we lift up one voice. Singing hallelujah. To a God we lift up one voice. To a God we lift up one song. To a God we lift up one voice. Singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. Heavenly Father, it's a... Uh... It is, uh, Pastor said this, Lord, it's a scary prayer when we turn our lives over to you, God, when we think about it without you in the picture, which is a crazy thing, because God, here's what we know, when we give our lives to you, you care for us in a way that no one here can. Lord, you, you care for our hearts, Father God, you see the beginning, middle, and end already. Father, help us to be able to give ourselves to you without worrying. Father God, understanding that that's where peace and comfort and joy come from, Lord. When we live a kingdom life, Father God, we don't have to worry about the things that an earthly life has to worry about. Jesus, it's a tough thing for us to let go. It just is. It's our, it's our fleshiness. But God, give us the, the strength to let go and allow you to move in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, uh, I was supposed to announce that the men's and women's Bible studies are starting at the end of the month. Uh, if you're a man or a woman and you want to study, get a hold of somebody. Look it up on the online. We have information for you somewhere. So be blessed. Uh, we're going to be quiet as ministry is still taking place up here. Uh, if you want to have conversations, let's go ahead and move them out there. Uh, be blessed, and we'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>